morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for having this chance to talk to you about uh, uh, this uh, initiative that uh, I've been working on uh, in the last uh, uh, three, four years together with um, other uh, young researchers. And uh, let me just uh, start by uh, introducing you to Operation Research. Uh, Operation Research is a branch of applied mathematics. It is quite recent because uh, it was born during World War II. And uh, as you can see from the picture, it is uh, uh, in the middle of several other disciplines such as computer science, optimization, business analytics, decision science, uh, and so on. So its nature is really quite manifold and interdisciplinary. And um, uh, it is mainly known for uh, solving, uh, studying and solving optimization problems. So something where uh, there is uh, a quantity to be minimized or maximized. Usually they are profits uh, or uh, minimize the costs of a company and several other applications. And it's based on mathematical modeling and uh, application of uh, some resolution, some solving methods that may be exact or also heuristic. Uh, typically, uh, problems in operation research, they we start studying them by a problem description. So it may be through a written description of the problem or also a, an interview made uh, with the company uh, workers. And uh, by analyzing the description of the problem in words, we uh, formulate a mathematical model, as you can see in the right uh, picture, uh, where we use some variables and uh, some um, constraints in order to represent the problem. The variables uh, are the quantities that we would like to uh, compute uh, to determine, so the, our incognities of, uh, of the problem. And uh, the constraints uh, are used to represent uh, some uh, uh, limitation uh, given by the, the, the real problem. For instance, in a production problem, the company may be not willing to spend more uh, than a certain budget or uh, not to hire a certain, more than a certain number of workers. And uh, typically, in the basic uh, um, problems that you can study in operational research, they, they may be represented by using linear expression. So uh, linear inequalities, equation, and uh, as you can see uh, the, in the formulation, there are only two inequalities and one objective function that is uh, introduced by the minimization of some expression. So through this model, we can uh, um, pass the model to a solver, to maybe a commercial or an open source solver, in order to make it compute a solution. And uh, this solution typically has to be interpreted because uh, maybe we made some errors in the formulation of the model and we weren't able to represent correctly the real situation. So this is not just a one-way process, but we typically, typically it's circular. We keep going and on until uh, we get to the right interpretation and uh, a strategy to suggest to to our, our customers or our, uh, our companies. So um, it has several aspects, uh, not only the mathematical modeling uh, skills are required, but maybe also some implementation skills, some coding skills, and uh, we can use digital technologies. And uh, the basic uh, uh, requirements uh, um, to enable to deal with this kind of problems uh, uh, typically, uh, higher secondary school students already have uh, these, uh, these skills. So we started uh, wondering if uh, whether uh, operational research uh, were introduced to some uh, um, higher secondary school, in particular grades 9, 12, and, and how. So um, we only were, were able to find uh, like uh, 23, 24 initiatives worldwide. Uh, this, this review was done uh, uh, three, two years ago, and uh, we classify all the initiatives according to national, international project, competition, training courses for teachers, workshop for students, uh, or teaching units uh, done in the classrooms. And um, 
So we look for some explicit and uh, implicit references to operation research in the main uh, mathematics uh, education guidelines, not only national, but also international. And we were able to find uh, terms such as modeling and problem solving, critical thinking, or um, ability to develop and apply mathematical thinking to solve a range of problems in everyday situation. So uh, the uh, skills that uh, the competencies that uh, uh, operation research uh, is able to make students uh, acquire are uh, exactly what are suggested uh, in the national and international guidelines. So since uh, there was no, no may, not so many initiatives, we decided to develop and uh, design and develop our own, uh, which is called the ROAR. Uh, ROAR stands for uh, Real Applications of Operation Research and uh, it's addressed to higher secondary schools. And as I said, I'm not, the, I'm not alone in doing this project because I'm uh, together with other young researchers, uh, Italian young researchers, Gabriella Colaianni and Alessandro Gobbi, as myself, are uh, uh, experts in operation research. And instead, uh, Eugenia Taranto is a researcher in mathematics education. So this uh, ROAR project is um, a learning path uh, based on active learning and constructionism. So we, uh, all the exercises we propose to the students uh, are uh, problems that are closely connected uh, with a student's everyday life or reality. And um, we were able to implement uh, our three-year project by means of a path for transversal skills and orientation in a scientific high school uh, in Iseo in the province of Brescia together with the um, mathematical teacher of uh, that, were, that, were a grade, uh, that was a grade 10 class uh, when we started, uh, and the teacher is uh, Marinella Picchi. So um, in the first unit, uh, so it's a three-year project developed, uh, organized in three learning units. In the first unit, uh, we focused on mathematical modeling. We introduced the students to linear programming, in integer and mixed integer linear program. Basically, how to formulate uh, the problem, uh, as, we, as you saw in the, one of the first slides, uh, by means of linear expressions. And um, they solve the problem, then uh, they find uh, the optimal solution for the problem, uh, either on paper or also by using some digital technologies, uh, such as GeoGebra, Excel Solver, and um, usually we also did some interactive light poll with the students by using Mentimeter. And uh, the first unit was implemented uh, during winter 2021, so we were uh, almost all the time uh, online. The second part of the second unit uh, instead is about graph theory. So we introduced the student to the concept of vertices, nodes, arcs, uh, and some uh, classical operational resource problems such as uh, uh, the shortest path problem, so think about, for instance, Google Maps, uh, how to compute the shortest path from two points uh, and other uh, uh, graph problems. And uh, instead of working on uh, mathematical modeling skills, uh, we focused on uh, developing heuristic algorithm and uh, teach the students how to write pseudocodes for their algorithm without implementing them uh, on some, with some programming languages. but. Uh, to, uh, they, they applied their algorithm uh, and, and we also had another digital technology because we proposed some quizzes by using Kahoot. And the last unit is currently under implementation and the class, uh, uh, sorry, I forgot to say that we started with a, a grade 10 class and we are still working with the same uh, 25 students that now are in the last year of their high school. And uh, they, uh, in their curricula, as uh, computer science, so we decided to, propose, to teach them how to uh, implement the mathematical models developed during the previous year by using a programming language, a programming language that is Python. And uh, we, um, instead of using a commercial solver, we decided to, um, uh, to use an open source library to solve the problem. So we use the spider as a, an environment to code in Python, and they are start they are learning to learn uh, to learn Python to solve optimization problems. Every lecture typically.
Kali of our uh, units uh, has the same structure because we typically start with a homework correction of the previous lectures. Uh, and uh, then uh, we uh, either we explain a new topic, uh, just the needed concept, and then we assign a group work to the students, uh, or we do the opposite. So we don't explain anything and we just divide the students in groups uh, and uh, then we let them discover and explore uh, the topics that we are going to explain later. And uh, so they are um, enhanced uh, in uh, working uh, in collaborative ways. And typically we end the lecture with a live poll in order to discuss the topics and, the, and collect their feedback. Every unit has a final project. Uh, at the end of the, of the first unit, we uh, divided the students into five groups and we assigned uh, an optimization problem, an authentic optimization problem, uh, different to each group and they had to formulate the problem in a mathematical way and uh, to solve them by using Excel solver. And uh, in the end of this, at the end of the second unit, instead, we still uh, assigned a problem. They were still divided into five groups, but this time the problem was the same for every for every group. So we, it, was, it, was, it was like a competition uh, because the, uh, different groups uh, could see, could check the scoreboard and discover how the other groups uh, were uh, uh, managing in solving the problem and uh, by results. So it was quite challenging. And uh, this year, uh, we are going to exploit instead uh, the uh, teaching methodologies and cooperative learning. Uh, thanks to a, a, a parent uh, of, a, of a student, uh, we, are, we have uh, an industrial, a real industrial problem that all the groups will try to join forces in order to solve it. During these years, there have been other role-based initiatives, such as uh, different training courses in Sicily and uh, one incoming, uh, coming in, uh, in Milan, uh, addressed to, to service teachers. And um, in Sicily, there have been also the implementation of the first unit in the context of uh, Liceo Matematico, so collaboration between universities and uh, um, high schools. And um, Last year, uh, together in parallel with the second unit, we also proposed uh, some uh, seminars for orientation and civic education purposes that were uh, open not only to our class, but also to several other class, uh, classes in the same institute, but also from other schools uh, in, the, in the region of uh, Lombardy. And uh, these meetings were focused on uh, presenting uh, different applications of operational research. So. Um, the speakers were from both from industry and academia. They had different backgrounds and career paths. For instance, we had some, yeah, some researchers, some engineers, some mathematics, but also a philosopher and, uh, and one expert in history. So uh, they presented how they applied uh, some, some mathematical optimization techniques uh, to solve uh, routing problems, uh, railway and transportation problems, uh, uh, sustainability issues uh, and uh, these were quite interactive because uh, students could make a lot of questions in the end uh, specifically related also to, um, to orientation to the university path uh, because they are they are up to end their uh, high school uh, path and uh, I forgot to say that all the sem all the seminars except one are uh, have been recorded and are available on YouTube, uh, unfortunately only in Italian. And uh, there is also, a, for, e for every seminar, there is also a, um, an article uh, published on uh, uh, MedMaths, which is the main Italian website for uh, disseminating mathematics. And so they are presented in a very uh, uh, informal way uh, that can be understood uh, for people that are not expert of operational research, but uh, still who can understood, understand uh, the, uh, the potential. So to conclude, uh, with this implementation, by proposing uh, these uh, uh, several activities based on mathematical modeling and uh, implementation uh, and skills, uh, we saw that uh, not only the students who excel in mathematics uh, are able to tackle the, the project, but also um, ordinary higher secondary school students. And uh, this is mainly because uh, students work in groups, uh, so they can help each other and, uh, so, and support each other. And they, most of the students uh, broaden their experiences with mathematics because they 
didn't thought that uh, didn't think that uh, mathematics could be could have such applications in reality and uh, in our opinion uh, we think that uh, operational research should be inserted included in the mathematics uh, regular lectures maybe not every day but on a regular basis and we have an official website uh, in Italian and an online repository, both in Italian and in English. So every problem, uh, every problem we propose to the student can be found on the online repository and uh, also with slides of lecture, but uh, you can customize and build your own uh, operational research path. And uh, as future work, uh, we are going to finish the experimentation with the uh, the class in ISEO. Uh, we have some other training courses uh, starting in January, and of course, uh, since we are uh, we are researchers, uh, we are uh, uh, we have already published a few scientific papers uh, related to the raw experience. But we are going also to describe uh, the the, in, the current uh, units uh, in the future. So, uh, and in the end, uh, we are going to do a longitudinal study in order to compare. Uh, the initial point and the, the end, so the three teaching units, in order to evaluate the impact the unit had on the students. These are uh, some uh, references and the YouTube channel or the online repository. So thank you for your attention. Thank you, Alicia, for sharing a project that provides an opportunity for students to experience this fresh branch of mathematics the operational research. Very interesting indeed. So let me check if there are any questions by our participants, Alicia. So far, we don't have any. So may I encourage any participant who would like to ask something to Alicia to write in the chat. Thank you. Oh, yes, I, I can post a link to the material. I will uh, write it in the chat. Thank you, Rahel. How can you disseminate this session for very in Italy? Um, okay, yeah, um, I'm a part of the um, Italian Operation Research Society. Uh, so we um, typically, uh, every year during the, the annual conference, uh, we spread the, uh, all the initiatives. And um, we also collaborate with other research groups, uh, like one in uh, Naples that uh, has done a training course for seminars. So we, uh, I was invited to, to Naples to give a lecture about our, uh, our project, and uh, it was in front of uh, 30 uh, uh, teachers from Campania. And so we were able to disseminate and spread our results uh, also also to uh, the teachers, because uh, um, typically, uh, as I said, we, um, we worked in the classroom with the students, but uh, if, we, uh, if we do some training courses for teachers, we are able to reach uh, uh, our, our number uh, way far uh, bigger than just one classroom, even if there is a trade-off between the, what we are able to uh, teach by ourselves uh, uh, directly. But uh, so we plan to keep going with the training courses. Another one is starting is about to start in uh, at the University of Milano Bicocca, uh, still uh, addressed to uh, classrooms of uh, higher higher secondary school classrooms. So we hope to keep going uh, uh, to be able to disseminate the activity. And I saw another question. Yeah. What's the uh, minimum level of these students? Okay, the minimum level of the students regarding the first unit, um, all the three units are quite independent, even maybe during the presentation didn't uh, seem so, but are thought to be uh, focused on one main topic and they could, could be split uh, if one would like to. The minimum level uh, is the one for um, grade 10 level, I mean, uh, they need to be familiar familiar with uh, some algebra and they need to be work uh, with uh, linear inequalities in equation uh, equations and uh, maybe uh, just uh, have started uh, 
um, uh, to work with the Cartesian plan and some uh, uh, so draw the lines uh, and that are just the minimum requirements in order to 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 start with the ROAR project. Uh, how do the companies usually react to your proposal? I don't know if you mean uh, um, companies like industry, uh, because we haven't proposed the project to some industry, except for the um, uh, for the parents of uh, this student who we uh, last summer we asked uh, to the student to find a, a real uh, concrete problem that we were uh, about to we were going to solve in this last unit. And so they ask to their students, uh, um, to ask to their parents uh, where they worked, uh, if there were any optimization problems to solve. And one uh, parent uh, answered, and uh, it is about some um, lean optimization and milk RAM uh, delivery. But typically, we do not propose uh, to companies uh, the project. We propose it to universities or to uh, teachers. Um, so I, I cannot, I don't know how to answer about the companies. Typically, teachers are uh, uh, quite enthusiastic uh, about uh, the project because uh, uh, we provide um, a different uh, way to present mathematical concepts that uh, do not remain uh, abstract, but they have uh, a meaning and a concrete uh, examples in reality. I'm going to post the link in the chat about the repository.